Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another episode of our Python game development tutorial where we are building our Clash Royale like game. And last class, we added these three lines of code, right? That is creating our player base and placing the player base on the X position in minus 400, that is the left, left side. And we are giving this player base an image, right? And this is the image we're giving it, right? Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to, to keep uh, creating the, the, the stage for us. So what I'm going to add now is a background. And to add a background, again, everything we're going to add to our game, we need a class for that first, as I created the class castle, right? So I will go here on the classes plus icon, and I will add a class called background right now and uppercase B, right? Background, okay, and there it is, my class background. And now I can create my class uh, here in the game start to add it inside the game. And I will do the same way I did for the player base. I'll say that my, my field is a background. So I'm creating a background and I'm calling it as field. And now you can see when I stop and play my game, I have a blue square there saying empty image because my background doesn't have an image yet, right? So I'm gonna add an image to this field. Now I want to say that this field dot sprite. So again, the same thing we did with the player, right? Player base sprite equals new sprite castle. So the field sprite is gonna be a new sprite from the image with the name, and now we have to add a image for our background, right? So I'm gonna go here on the sprite section on the plus icon, click that, and I'm gonna look for a background sprite to use there, and I'm looking for a specific one that has a river in the middle. Let me, this one here, river background. So I select that, select asset, and I can give it a name. I'll call it River Background. And I press OK. And now I have my River Background Sprite over there. Right? So the field sprite is a new sprite from the image River Background. But as you remember, that's not the full name of my image, right? River Background dot PNG. So I have to include the .png in there. And when I press play now, you will realize something. Oh, here, sprite. Okay, now you realize something else. There you go. Okay, now the problem is my background is on top of my player base. I cannot see my player base anymore, right? That's because my player base was created first and then it was placed on the screen. And then later I came and created my background that was placed on top of my player. So the order that we code our stuff here matters because the other, the order we, we create them, the, it will be the same order that will be created in the game. So if I created my player first and then I created my background, of course my background will be on top of my player. So if I want to solve this problem, I have to create my background before I create my player. So I will select these two lines here. I will control C, I'll hold my control and I press the C to copy. And then I will go here on the beginning of this first line here. And I will press enter to create some extra lines behind that. And now here at the top, I can hold control and press V to paste the stuff that I copied. And then now we don't need this code here anymore, right? Because we have it at the top. And now my background is being created first. And now if I stop and play my game, you can see that now my castle is on top of my background, right? And that's what I want. Okay, now I will just drag my castle a little bit more to the left. So I will put here 450, maybe, maybe 500 will be a better number. Okay, that's better. 
And now, as I told you, we are gonna have the player castle and the enemy castle, right? The player base and the enemy base. So to create the enemy base, what I'll, what I'll do now is I will get the other sprite we have for the castle. We have another castle over there. So I'll go here on the sprites plus, and I will look here for the other castle I have. Uh, where is it? Let me look for it. So here we have the gray castle and here we have the beige castle, this other castle here, right? So I will select this one, press select asset and I'll give a name for this castle. So I cannot call it as castle because we already have a castle image there. So you can see if I press okay, it doesn't allow me because we already have something that is called castle. So this one I will call enemy castle like this. So we also cannot use spaces on the name. So to not use space, what we do is we always start the second letter, uh, the second word uh, capitalized. So you can see that enemy is lowercase and then capitalize C for castle. So enemy castle, and I do it everywhere. You, you see more places where I do it later. So enemy castle, okay. Oh, here you can see the player base is like this as well. So if I cannot use spaces and I have, or I need, or I want to use two words, I just start the second word with uppercase, right? So now I have my enemy castle here as a new image. And what I want to do is I want to create now another base. I have my player base that is a castle and I also wanna have an enemy base that is also a castle. Both of them are castles, right? So if I stop and play my game, you can see that my enemy base is over there. I will move my enemy base, so enemy base.x. I will send it to the other side of the screen. So if my player x is minus 500, I will send my enemy base to 500. So they will be exactly on the opposite side of the screen. All right, and the last thing I want to do is I want to give an image to my enemy castle, right? to my enemy base. So I can say enemy base dot sprite is a new sprite, new sprite from the image. Now for the player, I used the image castle, but for my enemy base, I will use the image enemy castle dot PNG. So I will use enemy castle dot PNG. There you go. So here, here you can see that I created my enemy base the same way that I created my player base, right? The only thing I change is the name. One is called player base, the other one's called enemy base. I also changed the X position for the player base and the enemy base. One is minus 500, the other one's 500. And they also have a different sprite. Right, one has the sprite castle.png, the other one has the sprite enemy castle.png. But both of them are castles, right? Both of them are castles. Cool. So if I stop and play my game now, you can see that now I have my enemy base over there. Nice. Now we have to have some bridges here, right? So our troops, our units can walk on top of the bridges to cross the river. Right, so we'll add bridges here as well. So let me look for the sprites first. So I'll go to the sprite. Here I have the bridge. I select the bridge, select asset, and I can just call it bridge. There you go. And then, so I wanna have two bridges. I wanna have the top bridge and the, la and the bottom bridge, right? So I can say that my, oh, first I need a class as well, right? I'm gonna add a new, a new object to my game. So I need a class. So I need a class for the bridge. So this will be the bridge class. I call it bridge uppercase B, press okay. And there I have my bridge class. Now I can say here that my top bridge, again, two words, the second one starts uppercase. The top bridge is a bridge, right? I stop and play. There is my bridge. 
Well, not yet. Let's give it a sprite first. So top bridge dot sprite. So see, I can even uh, give a sprite first before I change the position. That's allowed. I just cannot do something like this. So here I'm trying to give a new sprite before I create the bridge. That cannot happen. How can I give a sprite to a bridge that doesn't exist? To an object that doesn't exist, right? So the order matters. So first I create and then I gave the sprite. But the order matters if I'm creating the object. If I'm just setting attributes, setting the X, setting the Y, setting the sprite, the order then doesn't matter. All right, so my top bridge is a sprite. Uh, my top bridge sprite is a new sprite from the image called bridge.png. And I stop and play my game. And you can see that now I have a bridge there, but this should be at the top, right? Because this is my top bridge. So I will drag this bridge up by changing its Y axis. So here, if you remember, going up Y plus, so the Y increases. So I know that the start position is zero, zero. So the top bridge dot Y. So if it was zero, I have to increase to bring it up. Let's try 200, stop play. There we go, it's in a good position. I will do 250, there you go. And as I have a top bridge, I will also create a bottom bridge that is a bridge. And the bottom bridge has a sprite that is a new uh, sprite from the image with the name bridge.png. So I stop and play. You can see that my bridge is created with a sprite in the middle of the screen and I want to bring it down. So the bottom bridge.y will be, so for the top bridge, I used 250. For the bottom bridge, I will use minus 250 to bring it down. So when I press play, now I have my bridge there in the bottom of the screen. And yeah, now our game now is pretty much set up. We just have to create units, right? So how are how are we gonna create the units here? Well, first, let's look here on the sprites for our first troop. Okay, so I will add a new sprite here on the sprites, I'll go click on the plus. And I will look here now for the first unit of my game. And this will be my player's unit. So let me look here. We have a bat and a blue slime. We have some running bunnies here. We have moving stuff here. Here, I'll use the ghost first. This will be my first uh, unit that I'm gonna spawn. So I select the ghost, select asset. I have to give a name for this sprite. I'll just call it ghost for now. And I need a class if I want to put this ghost inside the game, right? So I will create a new class now. So in the classes, I will press the plus button and I'll call this class, uh, not ghost, actually, I'll call it unit. So the unit will be any unit that I'm gonna spawn as a player. So as a player, I'm going to spawn my ghost unit. So that's going to be a unit. I'm going to spawn my, I don't know, my spider unit. That's going to be a unit as well, right? So here on the start tab, I can say, for example, that my ghost is going to be a unit. So I'm going to give a name for my, for my ghost. I'll, I'll call it Gasper, Gasper ghost is a unit and I'm just creating my ghost inside the game. And I have to say that my Gasper ghost dot sprite is a new sprite from the image ghost.png, right? Ghost.png, there you go. Stop, play the game, and there I have my ghost. 
So it's pretty simple for us to add new stuff to the game, right? And that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing in this video. In the next video, we are gonna uh, understand better how we can create the ghost exactly when I press on the screen. And how can we make this ghost to walk, right? How can we move this ghost around? Because this ghost is gonna have to, not just the ghost, but any player unit and any, any enemy unit as well, they're gonna uh, have to walk towards the bridge. So they're gonna do this, walk towards the bridge. And when they get to the bridge, they have to go to the other tower. So if my enemy castle spawns a unit, the unit comes to the bridge, one of the, uh, one of the two bridges. And when once it gets to the bridge, it will then uh, target my castle. But the castle, the player, will spawn their units that will go to the bridge and then later go to the enemy castle. So it's a little bit different, but the movement itself, the logic for the movement is the same. So that's what we're going to be doing next class. So save your game and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.